So the end of season is upon us. Thankfully, things have got a lot, lot better since the last time we met. But we've got one game to finish off the rest of the season. And then thankfully, we'll have a nice long break for the summer transfer window to hopefully reshape this squad. So the first game following the Sassuolo defeat was actually an away win against Atalanta. We ended the run of six defeats in a row against one of the top sides in the league, really. Matai Destro getting the goal in the 50th minute. And although we probably didn't deserve to win or get a point, we did. Next up was a game we definitely should have won, and we didn't. It was a 2 all draw at home against Cagliari. Matai Destro, well, we're going to get beat. Thiago Almada's 94th minute equaliser ended up giving us the point. But if you look at the expected goals, we definitely should have won this one. Next up was another win, this time a 2-1 away win against Bologna. And if you look at the stats, we definitely didn't deserve it. A 90th minute winner from Eldor after he put us in front eight minutes in. And I think it was this game where I felt confident we, <laughs> we weren't going to get dragged into any sort of relegation scrap. A fantastic 2 all draw against Napoli followed that at home. Uh, Eldor and Almada on the score sheet for us, Lozano and Oshimen on the score sheet for them. We then beat local rival Sampdoria away from home 1 and Il Goran Pandev came in and scored in the 93rd minute after Quagliarella had missed a penalty for them earlier on as well. So a little disappointing for them, fantastic for me. We then had a tough run of fixtures, the first of which was a 1 0 away defeat against Roma. Ed and Jack over the only goal of the game in the 27th minute. Another 1 0 defeat, this time away from home against Juve. We, we held them back for quite a long time, but Chiesa. Got the winning goal in the 82nd minute and a fully deserved win for Juve. We then beat AC Milan 2-1. Eldor and Matai Destro with the goals for us. They got a late consolation goal. And if you look at the stats, they probably did deserve something from this game. But I don't care. This formation is actually working now. And finally, it was a 3-2 away defeat against Fiorentina. 86th minute winner for them. A, a late goal seemed to be quite a theme in our games. Thiago Almada and Luca Pellegrini with the goals for us. And that sees the Serie A table looking like this. We are still in 14th. That is as high as we can go. We can drop further down the table, down to 16th um, after today's game, but I'm hoping that that won't happen. Uh, we've already reached one of our club vision objectives of becoming an established Serie A side, and that is a year ahead of schedule, so that is fantastic. And yeah, after the absolute dramatics of last episode, getting beat six games in a row, we really did bounce back in the next five We've had a rough past four, but that's understandable against Fiorentina, Juve and Roma. For today's episode, though, Benevento at home, and then we'll talk about the squad and what we're going to do for next season. But we'll get this team selected, and I'll see you kick off. So I believe Benevento are bottom of the league, so you would expect us to be able to get the win in today's game. All oh my days, we've scored within 30 seconds. I was waiting for this highlight to end, thinking, because I changed my settings at the beginning of the game for the recording, and um, <laughs> I thought usually the highlight <laughs> the highlight doesn't usually count for nothing. That is the best own goal. Or is it the best own goal we've seen? I'm pretty sure we've seen just as bad as one. But we're 1-0 up after an own goal one minute in. But I was just saying, Benevento were, are in bottom of the league, I do believe. Uh, although that doesn't usually count for much when it comes to us. But uh, that is a great start. Benevento have been coming back into this ever since we took the lead. We'll wait and see uh, how this highlight turns out. Hopefully, they can score another own goal for us. Oh, big ball of the top. Caprari is in behind. Mattia Perrin has an easy save. And that is ticking away. One minute ago, we've been completely dominated this first half, to be quite honest with you, looking at the match stats. If it wasn't for that absolutely dreadful own goal, we would be... I'd be very unhappy. Let's just put it that way. But there is a highlight before the end of the first half. Almada pinches the ball and Mattia Destro is set in behind. He's only got the keeper to beat. And he can't beat them. Do you know what one Benevent or nil? Let's get back out for the second half. It's a game pretty meaningless, to be quite honest with you. They had already relegated. We are staying up. Can't really make any further moves. But uh, I'm thinking this formation, I know I was talking last episode about ditching it for the wingers. Oh, Caprari scores. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I don't I don't want to just revert back to wingers because I hope it's all I ever use. I would like a narrow formation to actually work for me uh, once in a while. So I want to stick with it and make it work. Maybe it's just the personnel. And if I get the right personnel in, I'll be able to get it to work. And um, if we can sort of finagle some money in the January, in the summer transfer window, I've got three players who I know that I want to sign already. And they're all reasonable fees, as long as I can actually get it done. 
But uh, starting starting transfer budget of about two million pounds. It's looking like it's still the guaranteed transfer budget for next season. I'm not sure if it's going to give me the option to increase that, depending on the uh, amount what I think we can finish. But I wouldn't want to increase it too much because I'm never ever sure. As Raspadori goes through, Matea Perrin, we're getting dominated, lads. I'm going defensive corner for us. Goran Pandev will be the man to take it. There's absolutely zero people at the back post. I did change my corner tactic for this season, um, testing out the back post, the far post corner rather than the near post. And to be quite honest with you, it hasn't worked. So next season you will be expecting one of my centre-halves to be scoring a lot more goals unless the uh, sows through and we're going to get beat up in a bit. Or let's just get to the end of this game, please. And there we have it then, boys. A final dear defeat for the end of the season. Just perfectly sums up uh, our season so far. Beat AC Milan, then get beat up Benevento. Absolutely lovely. Oh, here we go. No CFC end of season review. New arrivals, Nicolo Armini and Thiago Almada. Um, they were very happy with Armini, basically down to the fee, I think, and his wages being quite low, but they were quite happy with Thiago Almada. We've got a minimum fee release clause in, by the way, of 55 million, which I'm fully expecting to be activated within the next couple of seasons, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Armini and Almada. Uh, Almada is obviously going to be in the starting level next season. Armini, I'm not so sure about. Maybe he might need a season out on loan, or maybe I can afford to play him. I'm not sure. I'm still a bit undecided. Uh, the season's results. So the board did expect mid table at the start of this season, but obviously when we came in, our job was just to avoid relegation. Final position in 15th, 22,000 average home attendance, plenty of room to grow that as it's only 60% full. Eldor was, of course, top goal scorer of 14 goals, and uh, the board confidence is C-. It was definitely more than that for us, personally. Our biggest win was the 3-0 a home win against Spezia. Were we in charge? We were in charge at that point. Match to remember, a 2-1 win against Sampdoria. Uh, goal of the season was Thiago Almada's. That was a free kick. It wasn't even that good. The finances, but it all looks normal. This is how we lined up most often, our uh, former tactic that we were using. So the fans player of the season was Eldor, young player Melagorni. Signing the season was Armini. Goal of the season was Almada. Top scorer, Eldor. Most assists was Zappa Costa as our right wing back. Uh, most man of the match was Eldor and highest average rating was Zappa Costa with a 6.9. A 6.9 was our highest uh, average rating. Record breakers, six players of the match for Eldor. Worst discipline, nine yellows and one red for Barashi, our centre-half. Well, that was nice. That was quite nice football manager. I've never seen that yet because with Manchester United, I basically finished that season and finished. So yeah, looking forward to next season, as you can see, next season budget of £2.09 million. And this wage budget, I'm not exactly sure what we are going to be uh, looking like. As you can see, we've currently got an 881,624 committed to wage total of 594 for next season, I think. And the vast majority of them players will be released. Next season's wage budget is apparently meant to rise to 925, so we could have an absolutely huge wage budget, uh, at least available, with not a lot of transfer budget, which will be fine by me. Well, you know, we'll be able to mix about with them numbers, and a lot of the players we are going to sign are youngsters who won't demand a stupidly high fee. So for next season, I think we're going to build around this ship. We've got Marco Sportiello, of course, arriving from Atlanta on a free transfer, so he will become our new number one as Mattia Perrin returns to Juve after his loan spell. At right back, we've got Zappa Costa, of course, returning to his club. Giglione is the next best, and he might very well end up being our starting right wing back. It's not an area that I'm uh, too in demand to be able to sign for, as is Sisbora is going to be replacing Luca Pellegrini, unless there is an super cheap, super obvious option to sign. I'm thinking these two and Sport Yellow are our starting defence. Now, centre-back is where it gets interesting. Uh, our best centre-back currently at the club is David Barashi. He's not too bad, to be quite honest with you. He's not too bad at all, so he might be end up being one of the starters. And then I think I'm going to need to sign a new centre-back. I've already got the signing in mind, so I'm hoping we can get him in as long as we can get the funding, funding together. And in terms of Armini, probably out on loan for the rest of the next season. Deep lying playmaker in the defensive midfield role. I'm going to stick with Filippo Melagioni. He's been absolutely flying up recently. His potential has been downgraded slightly by the coaching team, but if he can get to that four star, I think he's going to be a very, very well rounded midfielder and will be suitable, at least in the middle of the park. In terms of centre room midfield, I do not know. Honestly, I don't know what roles I want to play, what kind of players I want them playing in. 
So it could be a case where we sign two or sign none. I don't really know. Thiago Almada will be playing the attacking midfield role. And then I think Eldor is the only striker that I'm happy with. Um, so he will be our complete forward, maybe. He's very, very well-rounded without being superb at anything. But he's also one of the players who's most valued. So if we get a, a big offer in, maybe 15, 20 million, I might be tempted to sell. We'll have to wait and see. Just to raise funding for other areas of the squad. But we've got a big summer transfer window ahead of us. And I'm hopeful that we can at least do some damage with the amount of players that we're getting released by the club. You know, we're going to have plenty of spots to fill. Anyway, lads, if you have enjoyed this season and Genoa and the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge, please leave a like and get yourself subscribed. Until next time, take it easy.